And here's Paul Franco. Okay, everybody, welcome to the European webinar. And uh, from what I can see, it looks like uh, uh, we've, we've got volume. At least that's what I'm doing. I'm checking on another system with the uh, headphones, and it looks like we have volume, so it shouldn't be an issue now. Um, so here we are. It's uh, Friday, and the only uh, report we have of any real significance on tap for today, and let me go and move into here, is going to be Canadian unemployment. That's going to be the key thing. I also see Fed's lacquer is going to be on the uh, wires. Let's see. Hang on. Okay, Canadian employment. Let's see what they're looking at. Oh no, 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 no estimates. Employment rate. They're looking for six point eight percent. Um. You got export import process coming in. They're going to be also at 7:30. Got ECRI. That's at 9:30. Not no real news. So um, not really a whole lot happening. I did go in and post a tweet about uh, your dollar. We had supported that 592. So uh, we can go and throw that in there real quick. But you know, I, I don't like to focus on FX too much on this show. Uh, hang on, let me just switch that this over. And we'll jump into the spoos. We're definitely going to be taking a, a, a break. Um, not going to be doing no full hours anymore like that, that kind of business. So uh, hang on, let's go on and switch over, get my screens all switched over. And I was listening on another uh, system. And the sound sounds, it's coming through okay, so that shouldn't be an issue. So let's see. So here we are. Um, let me go on and just throw in this right here. I'm looking, only because I tweeted it out, and I'll just go over it real quick. Okay, here we are on the two hour and the euro dollar. And uh, I tweeted actually the actual just the tweet itself, the levels. I tweeted out right when we were at 592. It actually dipped below 592. So you had a chance to go and put on that trade. And I told you before, generally, I rarely ever tweet my my trades when I come on. This is one of the few times I decide, okay, what the heck? We're here at this level, boom, let's go and hit it. So I, I tweeted out the level. I just had to be doing some work on it. Yeah, of course, of course, you can see this piece of you-know-what has been falling like crazy. Although, yesterday I got lucky. I went and bought it at 688, and then I came in and, and uh, bought some more here at 669. I was able to scalp out. I had one guy ask me or tell me yesterday, he goes, at the beginning of the week, everybody was looking for 110. Hey, buddy, I don't know about you, but I was going the opposite direction on that. I said that for the last two Mondays. The stuff about this 112 business is the stuff of unicorns. This is a piece of you know what currency, and it is what it is. I might tick some people off, but you know what? Deal with it. But anyway, here we are. We're moving lower. And I, I, um, I, I you know, like I said, I, I, there was no way I saw this 112, 110. That's a, that's a crazy. People smoking crack if they think we're gonna, Euro was gonna make it up there. They don't even know. I'm not even gonna go into all that stuff. That being said, there's no way in heck I thought we were going to make it down here to these levels. I didn't even think we'd make it down to 640. And you can see here we bounced off this level. And why I love the levels, it's not talking Friday. So you know what? I haven't seen anything on the wire, not wires, but anything on Twitter. Anybody with their stupid animal patterns calling any bombs here. I think I was the only one that came up. And I'm just calling, and not anything about me. I'm just saying I keep it simple. I look at the levels and the fibs. That's it. No oscillators. It's oversold. It's very oversold. It's extremely oversold. That stuff is a bunch of you know what. So that's what I'm saying. I keep it simple. Levels and fibs. I don't go off of highs and lows. As I said before, anybody knew. 
how many actual trades are done at the very bottom tick and how many trades are done at the, at the top tick. That's a bunch of junk also. I'm just telling you to you how I, how I do it. Doesn't mean that my way is any better than anybody else's, but I'm just saying that's what works for me. So I came into this level here and you can see these nice touches in here. That's what I was going off because like I told you before, I don't use volume profile and I'm sure it probably works. I mean, probably if I did, it'd probably be great if you're scalping. Definitely, definitely, you know, I'm day trading, but scalping also. But I just use the body touches, and that tells me all I need with regards to volume profile. So I don't even use that. Um, but anyway, like I said, so that's where I came in here with this level of 593. And actually what was happening, I was doing an extension of this area right in here. And um, we're going to take a look at it. And this is only from a technical perspective, because I told you, I don't want to be using this show to focus on FX unless something big happens overnight. I'm only using this from a technical technical perspective to go on and give an idea of stuff. So anyway, I did it this here, and I'm like, what the heck, man? We've already blown through the 127%, and the 161% is way down here. I mean, jeez. I go, well, that's not going to work. I go, so then what I did was I just happened to drag this one all the way down here, and boom, that's where I saw the thing. That, that's about it right in here. It came up here, right there. And I didn't go off of this one. I went off the actual reactionary high, which is right here. Boom. 78%, 592. Already up. 30 pips. So I'm saying this is that's why I stepped in. Sometimes you, you just got to bang a level. That's it. That's it. I mean, that, that's actually, I stole that phrase from Trader Dante. But sometimes, like I said, you, you got to be willing to, to just just step in and take it. I mean, you don't want to go in and just, like I said before, you don't want to just willy-nilly go in and step in. But it, when you get a market that's so overdone, and you know I don't even like to trade on Fridays. But when you get a market that's so overdone like it is here, you got to figure when we blew through here, and, and 722 looked pretty good yesterday. And then beyond that, you know, I thought I was I was coming in like a champ at 688. And usually I'll scalp it real quick and it just jumped up a little bit. And I almost took it just for a few pips, and I didn't. I was kind of kicking myself that I didn't because I had done that. I could have gone and bought again lower because I always, even if it only jumps up a few pips, I'll usually go in and take it. Just so I can take something off the table, i got something in my back pocket. If it works lower, I've got, it. I've got something in my back pocket to give away. It was different for today because we would come so far so low. You got to be thinking, usually on a Friday, they're going to go with the flows. But if the market's so overdone, I mean, you know, and everybody, you know, you get all the cheerleaders, you know, talking about, oh, we're taking out these levels. Those people are always wrong. They're the same ones that are always going, they're the same ones that were talking about crude above $54. Those people don't do nothing. All they say is some stupid stuff on Twitter that provides no value, no value whatsoever. I love culling my Twitter stream at the end of the week. If I can get rid of people, and I hardly, most of the people I follow are actually are European journalists. And that's just to see if I can get a little edge here or there. I really don't follow almost no traders. And few traders, I follow a few traders. I'm not interested in anybody else's work. That's the just way. I've learned, I've picked up things along the line. I've learned a lot from Pips R. I've learned some stuff from the levels with um, 50 Pips. I picked up some stuff from Trader Dante. But like I said, most of these other people, I'm not interested in their other work. These other people, I, I don't care less. I could care less. I only look at my stuff because I know the way I trade. Because the thing is, is, is when you put on a trade, if the trade starts to go the other way, you're not going to have the confidence to go and hang on the trade. So you need to find out, if you want to use oscillators, fine. If you want to use dumb animal patterns, that's fine too. Find out what's going to work for you and you need to stick with that. You can try everything like I did before. Try everything in the toolbox. But you got to narrow it down and find out what works for you day in, day out. You're always going to have those periods where you don't make money or that things just aren't working your way or you just out of sync with the market. That happens. But you're going to have to find those tools that work for you in the long run. That's just the way stu stuff, stuff works. Uh, and uh, let's see. Uh, and Juice says, yeah, he's hearing me just fine. Uh, let me see. Uh, okay. Uh, Let's see, everything, so everybody looks like everybody's listening and hearing it well. 
But anyway, so that's why I brought up the, the, the euro dollar. Really, it was just for, because I already tweeted it, and I just wanted to use that as an example here. We're going to move on to everything else, but I just wanted to go on and share that. Is that sometimes you got, you're going to have to just take the other side of the trade, especially when the market's over to the upside or to the downside. It was the same thing when I said in crude three days ago when we were at $54, and I said, this is going to be a battle of the lower. And that's exactly it. It was just the market was so overdone. It was really about market positioning and crude. They just basically killed all the shorts. And after they killed all the shorts, then there was nobody left to kill. And then the market turned around and started going down. And the reason I didn't even participate in the market, um, you know, on the long side for crude, I was taking pot shots on the short side. Because once again, it all goes back to the same thing. You got to have confidence in your trade. And even though I had to respect the numbers, I didn't get away uh, get in the way of that that doggone train. But I said, at the end of the day, the supply levels are still the supply levels. So let's go move on to crude real quick. Uh, we'll get on with spoons and gold. And gold's a, a, another story. It basically hit my level as of this morning. But we're going to talk about crude. All, I mean, gold, and how that played out for yesterday. So here we are with the crude, and I think there's not a whole lot le le left to the downside. I wish I could have shared this earlier because we were down here at these lows, and I was going to say this 1517, but obviously the webinar starts when the webinar starts. But if anyone was short, I'd be saying, I'd be looking to go on and get out because there's not really a whole lot to the downside. Think of it this way. Once again, I go back to the same thing. We're not going to go back over past, past victories. But I'm just saying it's all about market positioning. As we got up here, you know, we, we rallied real hard and a lot of people got long. And then the market came back down. And then the market rallied real hard. And everybody thought we were going higher. And then we rolled back down. And so when we were selling it, you know, and actually when we got short, we got short in the webinar. This was some weeks ago, 52.35. My whole premise was, and it, obviously this, I was saying this was a key level. You know, basically, like I told you, the way I, I, I look at a market, everybody has their own way. There's no right or wrong way to go and look at it. Um, let me see. Um, okay, Juice says, uh, when you have time, can you – notices your EMAs on the gold and oil are different. Could you explain the reasons for that, and can you guess some things but curious? Okay, no problem. We'll do that. Anyway, so – my whole thing when we got short here several weeks back, and this was 52.35, and we were looking for this move down to, I think it was it was 47.80, which was 161%. I think it was in here, and um, that was like, and we, uh, and I, I missed it by, I think it was, it literally was 14, 14 ticks. So it's actually a $5,000 a $5, move, missed it by, by $140. We got short here, and I was looking for 47, then we got short again at 51, I was looking for 45. And actually, the, the actual move was 44, um, 4480, 40, and that was 161%. Of course, we went lower, but I didn't want to be in it after that. My whole point is, is what I look at is it's not that my way is any better. I'm just telling you that I've used everything in the book. I busted three accounts before when I started. So when I try and share, it's not because I think I know anything. I just try sometimes, like I said, you know, you heard me kind of go off on a tangent before here and kind of go off on somebody. And because when I try and share something, I'm trying to. I'm trying to share something so people can can learn from my own losses in the market in the past. So when I'm trying to share something, I'm not trying to be like a wise guy and think like, hey, I know this, I know that. You should listen to me. No, what I'm saying is, hey, listen to me and my stupid mistakes from the past and how I tried to get to work around those. And hopefully you don't have to have as many losses or share the same experiences that I did busting three accounts. That's why when I try and get, you know, get on my my soapbox are going and start, you know, you know, blasting away. That's the reason why. Not because I know anything of anybody else. It's just that I've been through the wars. I have a few limbs amputated off of whatever. And I'm talking about the trading wars. Like I said, that's how you learn. You learn, well, like I said before, you learn the most from from your mistakes. Uh, but anyway, the, the, what I look at is I look at levels, fibs, and also look at uh, market positioning. Now I do say, like I told you before, I do look at the news. Not so much from a fundamental standpoint. I, I do I do look at the news. I read the news. I go read a lot of investment research to get an overall macro perspective. That helps me. It's helped me in my dollar yen. I've been short dollar yen, okay? And uh, it kept me from covering yesterday if you went to those highs. I'm not going to go into all that because, once again, I don't want to focus the show on FX. Uh, Blake's the FX master. So, you know, I'm not going to – I want to spend – this show is, is for people to get an early move – idea of where things are going to go for crude, spoos, and gold. That's it. Every now and then we'll touch FX. 
But anyway, so I look at market positioning and I learned that from Blake. And I just took it to a different level in the way I look at things. And that's why we were all getting so bearish here. Well, we weren't bearish. Uh, like I said, at the time I said, if they get above 52.35, I mean, there's no denying it. You got to respect it. It's the same way we played this level up here on this run. And we weren't able to close above it. And, you know, obviously the rest is history, blah, blah, blah. And same thing here at 50.95. And this, we were a little bit more aggressive. I was saying, hey, you can sell it right here. And it was at 50.95. So they have to get above 51.04. Well, so I incorporate a lot of market positioning. So let's go on and fast forward to where we are now here. So essentially what we did was we killed all the bears. That's it. I'm not going to be listening to someone to tell me that they were bearish all along. You can have a bearish tilt. Don't tell me you were bearish down here and you rode it through that. That's the biggest bunch of horse manure I ever heard of, okay? I've been bearish. I didn't even play this long. I was taking pot shots, but I was respecting this sucker all the way, especially after we defended the 52.35. But the, the way I looked at it, right or wrong, is I felt they killed all the bears. They just they slaughtered them. It was just an epic battle slaughter, you know, going back to the medieval days. It was that kind of a slaughter. So when we got up here to 54.1, I was saying it's going to be a battle galore, and we already went into this, but uh, for anyone that was this kind of new, you can see how key 5401 is. And once again, for anyone that's new, you know I like to color in the zones because visually it makes it easier for me to go in and uh, to, for me to go in and see see things. Okay, so um, anyway, so here we are, right in here. We we've got this color colored zone here, and a moment. So here we are at Hang on one second. So, once again, here we are here uh, on on the crude oil market. And, and, and so we went and we, we really took the, took the market down. Everything fell apart. And, and you know, every, when, once we got the numbers, and the numbers were the numbers, and that, that was my whole point all along, was that uh, at the end of the day, you still have a ton of supply. And so it's going to be hard to convince people to go and buy at these levels because this was all about market positioning, killing all the bears. Now, here we are now, and I just don't see us being able to go much lower today. If we do... And that's if we do, I think the worst case scenario would be this 49.51. And actually, that was when we were here, and I was thinking, I wish I could go and share it, but I'm not going to go and share nothing out. I'm just going to wait until the webinar, because we were holding here at this 50.17. And I thought, well, 49.92 is 127%, and, you know, we didn't even make it down there. But we just we basically just dipped in here. I can see us maybe taking one more jump here, and maybe we can scare some people if we go sub-50. I just don't really see that there's anything like it. Here's my thinking right here is if you're bearish, if you're bearish, then if you want to, you can, you know, you're saying, well, I think we can still go lower. Okay, well then you can go and risk it above this 5067. I certainly wouldn't be doing it. I'm saying at this point, you just I I, I don't like to trade on Fridays. I don't like to go on and trade trade on Fridays. Uh, for the most part. I like I said, just being honest with you, I've been burned multiple times for doing that. 
for trading on Friday. So I don't like to, it's an unusual situation when I usually go in and come in on Friday, like, like what happened with the euro. And someone's asking me about that right now. And I said, you know, we rallied 30 pips off those lows. You have to be willing to take a little bit off, especially, that's what I'm saying is when I usually day trade, when I, I come in a position, I bang a level, I go in and take a little bit off. And I usually don't even let it ride too far because I, I know that the market, it's going to come off and then it's going to come back in. So I was telling this individual just now, I go, uh, you've got to go on in. If it runs up 30 pips real quick, relatively quick, especially under this circumstance and on a Friday, take some off and then let it, and as it eases back in, it's the same principle I, I, I used yesterday. You take off a little bit on a scalp because then when it comes back in, you've got the money to give back. You don't mind stepping, like with the euro dollar, this individual is just asking me right now, I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time on that, just from a technical perspective, so it doesn't look like I'm over here talking on both sides of my mouth. We'll go and throw it out there real quick. Let me just go and put it up right here. Okay. Let's go and put this up for five minutes. This just goes and just shows what I, what I look for. So I was over here buying here at 592. Now, now look at the five minute, and, uh, you know, I'll tell you what. You know, hang on real, sick, real quick. I'm, I'm going to go and show this chart real quick. I just... Some people just, I don't, I don't know. I don't know about some people. Hang on. Let's show this real quick. Apologize for that. I want to get this out. Let's see. Hang on one moment. I mean, it goes back to my saying I always say, it's all relative. I mean, if you, if, under this environment, the Euro re rallies five, I mean, 30 pips real quick, you got to you gotta be willing to take some of this stuff off. I keep trying to tell people, go for the singles and the doubles. Don't try and go for the home runs. I mean, look at the situation we've been under with the Euro. If it gives it to you and you got, you got that, that, that graveyard dojo shooting star, depending on how you want to look at it after that move, folks, you got to be reasonable. I mean, hang on, Mom. Jeez Louise. Hang on. Just a moment. Hang on one second. Okay. Well, let's get back to business. So anyway, so once again, I tweeted this out here about this 592. Now, this is a pretty good, decent run up here. I mean, there really wasn't much of a pullback. And we make it all the way back up here to 624, and you, you see this. I don't know if you can really outright call it a shooting star, but I'm saying is, and I said shooting star, because I'm going to say, I don't know about Graveyard Doji. It's a little bit too long, considering the move, blah, 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 whatever. How can you not take some profit off of that? I just don't get it. And you got to be working your fibs at the same time. If you think you got a low, so let me go, go show you real quick. And this is just, just for, for perspective. We're all on the same page. So when I see a move like this, I'm looking at the last swing high and the last swing low. So I'm looking like this. Watch. Boom. That's at the 78%. And then I also look at this. The 38% almost. I'm saying this. Come on. You got to be reasonable. You go, you go in and from here you, you rally nearly 25 pips. And it was pretty quick. And you know that this market has really been under pressure throughout the entire week. You take what you can get, you know. I, I just don't. I just don't get that. I mean, but anyway, let's get off of that, okay? Let me just real quick. Hold on. 
folks got to stop folks got to stop going for those home runs hang on one moment Okay, well, that's enough. Let me go and move this over here. Just someone's asking. I just want to go and answer. It's like, and I didn't want to wait till the end of the webinar. I like, you know, someone asked me. I want to go and answer. So, uh, um, Ed says he's underwater on the on the DAX. I, 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 you know what? I generally don't follow the the other indices. I pretty much just, uh, uh, I have kept an eye on the Hang Seng because of the the craziness that's going on over there. And I think that that could really set us up for a move lower, but um, but the same token, um, let me get over here. Uh, same same token though. Uh, let me go move this here. I just pretty much just follow. I just pretty much just follow the majors, the majors, and um, and um, spoos, crude and gold. And now I'm starting to look at ten-year notes. So anyway, here we are on, on the. Let's get back to this. Here we are on the crude oil market. I just think I just don't see anything a whole lot left. You've already killed all the bears here. It's better off you come in next week. If you're already bearish, you can look. If you're bearish, if you're still bearish, I'd be getting out on this 127% test because what it'll do is it allows us to go below the 50 handle. We can pop some stops and maybe we'll come back. We might even come back. If you look right here at this level here, right in here, that's 49.88. I, I, I just wouldn't be taking too much anymore. And it's already starting to find. That's the saying. I, when I share, I was looking at this. I thought about sharing it, and I was like, Nah, I'm just gonna wait till the webinar. But you know what? I, I, I we've got a nice level here at 5017. You're just asking for too much. You see here, look, this top, top, top. I mean, I'm talking about these wicks right in here, and I'm not saying the top, top tick. That doesn't mean crap. We come back down. It's support, support. So it's going to be support again. So anyway, let's go and move on to the 30-minute. We'll take a quick break, but let's go and move on here to the 30-minute. So we're in a sell mode. There's no doubt about it. We're in a sell mode. And once again, you can see here is a couple of little fake outs. But once again, like I told you, I use the exponential moving averages to go on and keep me in the trade. Okay. Now, Juice was asking me about the exponential moving averages. I got this from when I used to trade crew back in the day, but I came up with this myself, which is I use a nine and a twenty-seven. I'm using a different one on the gold, and I'll get into that later. But I use a nine and a twenty-seven. I use a nine and a twenty-seven on the thirty-minute. In FX, I use a nine and a twenty-seven on a 50, fifteen minute. Okay. Before I didn't want to just tell people, and people would ask me, oh, "What the heck." I'll go in and give it to them. I mean, I, I, I like I said, I don't use any monkey or animal patterns. You know, you know, like I said, I know I piped, I tick some people off. But I mean, like I said, you know, everyone, you know, like I said, when I say that, the monkey, you know, I, I'm just, I've already said that before. I know, like I said, I probably shouldn't, but I know it probably ticks some people off. I just, I just think that harmonics is a ripoff of Fibonacci. That's it. That's why I call them monkey and animal patterns. Okay. I know there's a lot of Fibonacci trades. Out. All they're doing is just using Fibonacci, and then they stretch it this way and that way. I mean, you know, Gartley's bats and crabs and deep crabs and deep bats and now, like I said, you know, like I said, I know I'm somewhat opinionated, so I just tell you what works for me. I probably should just keep it at that. I mean, sometimes I chide people about with their their oscillators, over oversold, overbought, and all that other stuff, only because it can keep on going that way. But here's the deal: is uh, the reason I use the exponential moving average because it keeps me in the right side of the market. So it saved my bacon a few times on the dollar yen. Whereas, like a stupid idiot, I tried to sell the dollar yen, and my EMAs had already crossed over and given a buy signal. And so finally, finally, I try to kind of pay attention to them. So like it'll keep me in the market. Or if I jump out of the market, which I generally do, that's what I'm saying. I leave a ton of money on the table. But at the same token, I don't. Lots of times, I do take my share of losses. But you know, it's I wouldn't say it's rare, but it doesn't happen very often that I get whacked too hard. And 
the reason that is is because sometimes I just I don't I don't stay in the trade very very long. And sometimes that that does hurt me from that perspective. You got a, a market that really runs, but the moving averages keep me in the trade. You can see here. So if I'm still inclined to be bearish, I know that generally when we test, we usually go up to the slower exponential moving average, and we generally overshoot a little bit. Okay, so that's why here and this one isn't really good because right now we're just in this range. But you can see we got up here. So my thinking is, is if, if I'm still bearish and I see this 51, then as long as this, and, and I come in here and let's say I played from the short side, okay? And I step in here and play from the short side. My thinking is, as long as we don't cross above here, I'll let it ride. I may not like the trade. I'll tell you that. I'm saying it's like, I'm probably holding my nose thinking, oh my goodness, uh, I, I, I'm going to take the short here. I just don't know about this trade. They may just go on and slap me upside the upside the head, but you know what? As long as we stay here with the with the faster moving average below the slow, then I'll I'll ride it out. That's essentially that's it. It just keeps me in the market. Or like I said, I get this move and I'm like, you know, give myself a high five and like, whoo, dude, you did all right. You went and covered. And I'm like, you know, at this point I'm thinking, wow, you know, it looks like it's kind could be kind of weaker, but it could come back too. What the heck should I do? And when I see this here, look, this, bo this body encompasses this body in this whole level. But I'm still kind of bearish, and I have that bent, and I'm saying, well, look at the 51. Let's look at what they can go. And then here, I really don't know at that point what I really want to go on and do. And so I say, you know what? I guess I'll go on and take the short side. I really don't like this trade. I'll tell you what. I don't know about this trade. I'm probably going to have to put my stop above 51.17. I think they're gonna spank me. I've got something to give. I've got something to give back, but this really sucks. And but this keeps me in the in the market. So I say, as long as this doesn't cross over, I'll stay with it. That's where it, that's where the exponential moving averages help me. It, I don't take it as I've said with y'all before. I don't take it as an outright buy or sell signal because you know we got the crossover here to sell, and you can see it remains sell the whole way. That's gonna happen with moving averages because once you get going one direction, you look like a champ. But I just don't use it that I just use it to give me to keep me in the direction of the market. That's all I go and use them for. But I do also I use them for when they're they're like when the market dips in here, we'll come back here. So when the market gets a buy signal and then we come back here, as long as the exponential moving average hasn't crossed over and we're coming back here to test support, then I feel okay to buy it. That's the difference. That, that's how it helps me. That's how I go on and use these. So let's go and take a quick break. Uh, hang on a moment. And we're going to go f and we're going to jump in, into gold. We'll, we'll definitely go and take a look at spoos. I don't have a clue. Well, I, 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 I don't have a clue on these spoos. And we're going to go and touch on that because, you know, I think it would go lower, but you know what I've been saying all along? I coined that phrase. It's a 401k put. You heard of the Bernanke put? This is a 401k put. More people come back to work. They're putting their money in the, uh, uh, for retirement because here in the U.S., we don't have retirement like the, we used to in the old days. So people have no choice. They got to go and put it, put it in the, you know, put in the 401ks. So anyway, so let me just go on in. Um, we'll go and take a real quick break and be right back. 